Welcome back to XYZ. Since I left you with some messy note trees in the past few tutorials, I thought it would be a good idea to detail how I would clean up note trees in animation notes to make them easier to read for myself and others. So let the spring cleaning begin. So here we are in animation notes. This is the note tree for the Plexus 2 tutorial. I'll make sure to drop a link in the comments below for everyone who wants to follow along and you can get the blend file. What I would start out with in cleaning up this mess is we bring in in the layout section a frame and we start dropping the loops into the frame. This way I don't have uh, to select the whole, uh, the, the single nodes every time. I can just select the frame and reposition it very easily. And I can also rename the frame. And I would like to call this generate spectrum pi. And we can give this a color to make it stand out a bit. What I would also like to do is get the offset polygon section out of here and put that in a separate frame. And for that, I bring in a group. And this group should have a mesh input, only a single mesh, not a mesh list. And as an output, we would also do a mesh. And I'll link that up for now. And I would call that fade visualizer. Let's bring in the frame to drop this node group in. We rename the frame again. And we can do a color again. I now invoke the subprogram, our group, and I link this new group up. And what I would also like to do is rename the input and output. this way I always know what is going into the group and what is coming out of the group. And now we want this whole section outside of the frame. We can do that by Alt P to unparent it, and we want to have it inside of this frame here. And I would like to change 
and the color of this to be something different. Let's change the network color so the whole group changes and we change that as well to something more green to discern it a bit more from the color of the generate spectrum pi loop. So we move on and we do the same thing for all the other loops. We bring in frames, drop the loops inside. And oftentimes I end up calling the frame the same as my loop or group name, but in some cases I deviate and I use longer names for the frame, since the frame uh, can encompass a lot longer strings and it doesn't get so cramped. In case of the loop name, it just gets too long at a certain point. And since this loop is called inside of this loop, I just drop the frame inside of this frame and nest it. So I know the loop is called right here. And I do the same thing with this frame. Let's tidy that up a bit more. So it uses as little space as possible without getting too cramped. And uh, for this whole section in between, I'd like to also use a group to keep it nice and tidy. The input would be a mesh list. And let's generate the output node. And what we want to put output is a mesh, a single mesh, not a list. And let's see what is coming out of here. This would be the mesh spectrum pi. So we uh, reuse that here as well. And I call that maybe not splines, but the whole uh, visualizer gets created in here. I can invoke our group and link it up. And 
let's get this out of the way. Let's bring in a frame for this group. I'll drop this down below and this underneath it. And we bring in one more frame. This will be our main node group. So with this, it starts to look a lot tidier. And I can see where there is the first loop and this one will be here underneath. And in this loop, we have one group that is right here. And then we have the next group that is down here and another loop that is down here that calls another loop that is right here. So everything is nested in a way that would make it a lot better readable. So if I'm using this node tree for myself only, I would leave it at that. But if I want someone else to have it, I would expose the the values I want the user to change, like uh, this fall off for the fade. I would start exposing these and put them in a master node group, you could say. And for that, we bring in one more group. And we start linking up values that we want to expose and can change easily later on in a single node group. So I would like to expose the sound and attack release the amplitude, of course, the count of the sound spectrum and the exponential rate. We already see that animation node is now generating an error. And one part is that we can't have object instancer nodes inside of groups or loops. They always need to be outside of a loop. So we would get rid of this and put it outside the group for now. And we also want to expose the object list for the spectrum pi. And then we start to look at our first loop and see what values you, we want to expose, like the, the map range node here. So we can, but we don't want to have this as an iterator. We want to have these as parameters.
and I would like to be as descriptive with the name as possible, so it is easily understandable what it will do later once only these values are exposed in the node group. And I think that, us, that is all in this node group. We move on to the next group, and I'd like to expose this fall off. So we bring over our group input and we drop it right here. And I also want to have this invert so we can invert the fade in and fade out effect. And with that, we already see that in the node group, the invoke sub program, our values are showing up. But we also have to bring them over to our loop input. And when we do that, it starts to show up right here in this sub program. And there we can expose it in our master group. We move on to our next group and see what we want to expose. In this case, we want to have the amount of the find close points node. And the min and max of this random number node to control the random Rady generation. And let's expose also the bevel depth of the curve object generation. And it will show up in our sub program. And we can start exposing these values as well. And we move on to our last loop. And there we don't really have any values we want to expose. So 
So let's wrap that up. We rename the group so we can find it easily when we want to invoke it, which will happen in a few minutes when we are done sorting through this. I'd like to have the fate to be one of the last values. you can just sort the values how you think they will make sense. And when we are happy with it, we also give the node tree a name. And we create another node tree. And we actually invoke our group in here. So this way, the whole node setup, our generation will happen in the background and we only expose the values we want the user to see. Everything else will be off into the background where it doesn't disturb. What is missing now is the instancer to get the Spectrum Pi mesh list. And we will bring that over and just copy it. And link that up. And we're going to create an integer that links up the spectrum count with the instances. And this way, and they're always the same. And with this, we have exposed all the values while getting the rest of the node tree out of the way and the user doesn't have to deal with the whole node tree just with this node group that exposes all the values that should be changed. And with this, we can see our visualizer. And this would be what uh, if we hand off our blend file, this is what the user would see, which is uh, way easier to digest than something like this. And with this, we end up with a pretty tidy node tree that you can easily interact with and you only have the parts exposed that should be user changeable. I hope you found this tutorial helpful. 
Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next time. Happy blending. No, there ain't no stopping us. Fly without boarding pass. Couldn't catch me, I'll be moving fast. Call me a shooting star.